So our, our second speaker is another veteran of Ignite Liverpool. Um, I don't know if there are any flags in, in this talk or not. Um, this might give some of the older hands a clue as to who's coming on stage. Uh, but if you welcome to the stage, Tom Williamson, who's going to be talking about having a stroke. Okay. Yeah, this is going to seem a bit self-indulgent, but they say talk about what you know, and this has sort of dominated my uh, life for the last 10 months. So last summer, yes, I had a stroke, and you may be thinking, what, oh, this guy, he had a stroke? He's far too young. Um, and we have this idea that the, the red flags, uh, um, uh, a stroke is a big thing, it's a big serious thing that requires emergency hospital treatment, a bit like having a heart attack. But what is a stroke? Well, it's um, when the blood supply to the brain is cut off and that kills brain cells. And every stroke is different. So strong, some strokes are quite minor, some strokes are catastrophic. And this year, uh, sorry, last year in this country alone, there were 100,000 strokes. That's one every five minutes. Uh, of which 38,000 were fatal. And we think of it as something that only affects old people. 400 children last year had a stroke. You are more likely to have one the older you get, but it did affect me, and this is what happened to me. So, uh, on June 24th last year, I had uh, a dental procedure. I had a filling, which included an anaesthetic, and I came away from that feeling a bit funny. Uh, I had uh, sort of slurred speech, loss of balance, uh, weakness in my right hand side, especially my uh, right wrist. So, I was recording. Uh, a, a podcast about the symptoms when I had the first symptoms, couldn't say that three months ago. <laughs> um, and that summer I had kind of normal time, there was me swimming in the North Sea off the Norfolk coast, um, but uh, the symptoms didn't go away, so I eventually got to see my GP, and he went, oh, that doesn't sound good, uh, well, we'd better get you to the hospital. Uh, so I went to the street in a Tree hospital and they ran a few tests on me, including a CT scan, and they went, yeah, you've got a blood clot in your brain. Uh, so I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good. Um, so whilst I was there, they did a few tests on me, including um, uh, what's called a mocha test, where they're testing your cognition. That's the same one that Donald Trump had. If you remember <laughs> all that. Uh, TV cameraman, oh, there you go, person, woman, man, camera, TV. Donald Trump got a perfect score, I got a perfect score, so my stroke had brain worked as well as Donald Trump's. <laughs> Bring it to that what you will. Um, but when I got home from the hospital stay, my symptoms got a lot worse. My balance was terrible. I had to, you know, hold on to things to stand up. Um, and then I got seen at the Walton Centre, uh, I had another scan, and the consultant uh, showed me, and he went, um, your, uh, your second scan is a lot worse than your first. So, um, I was let out, I was, I, I was put on early supported discharge, so I had a whole team of people coming to see me. And uh, one of the things I did was this wonderful background in grass, range of repetitive arm supplementary programs. So that's some gentle exercises uh, to build up the muscles that were affected by it. And uh, I got back to the uh, Walton Centre for my third scan, which apparently isn't as bad as my second one. I still think it looks pretty bad. They, and they're going to come up next. So if you've got a thing about MRI scans, there's your warning. And so, this walnut thing, that's not meant to be there. And apparently on the right hand side, that's why I have the third scan, um, apparently it's a lot smaller, it looks about the same to me. Um, but since, since then, I have been, so what I think happened is that I had my first scan, and then when I was in the hospital, I got a lot worse, which would explain why the second was a lot worse than the third. The third was better, and hopefully when I have the fourth, it'll show you it's um, even smaller. So the question I've asked, been asking myself is, do I feel lucky? I mean, I'm an atheist, so I don't attribute what's happened to higher power or anything like that. Um, I feel unlucky in the fact that it's happened, but unlucky in the, um, no, unlucky in the fact that it's happened. Sorry, cognition's not quite right, yeah? Um, but lucky in the fact that it hasn't affected my memory. Like, you know, I'm still me. I also feel very lucky that we live in a country with things like the NHS and Stroke Association. I've had lots of help there, they've been amazing. Um, so, 
I have been, been getting better over the last few weeks, and the thing is, I've just sort of, sort of done things. I haven't tried to um, do the sort of things that I'd usually do. Uh, for example, I was reading to my uh, daughter one of her favourite books. Um, it's called Oi Frog, and I always gave them uh, funny voices. So, 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 because you're talking it, and he's, he sort of sounds like he's booming. And there's a cat, and the cat has got this sort of evil posh voice. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I've been doing things like that. This is a very long 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, my time perception is much improved as well. So, yes, I, 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 I've been getting better. Um, I've been able to do voices. I've been able to do things like cook again. So, so the other day I was frying some mushrooms, and I went, oh, right, I need a bit of a toss. Oh, I can, I can toss a frying pan as well, brilliant. <laughs> um, and I cooked a big dinner for people uh, at the weekend, and um, yes, I am getting back to doing the things I enjoy doing, and took for granted before, including giving it night talks. Thank you very much. <laughs>